Wednesday. Um, are they going to add to the confusion over tapering, do you think? Well, I certainly think that people are going to be focusing very closely to see if we get any more hints on it. Um, I'm hoping that actually what we get is a little more guidance. I think they recognise, the Fed certainly recognises they need to provide a little more clarity. And I think actually in fairness over the course of the last week or so they probably have been doing. Um, we know it's going to be September, October, or December. That's fine. They've hinted that it could be an experiment as soon as September. Let's hope the minutes give us some kind of clues to that. Should we be going long on this uh, US dollar weakness? Uh, yes, I think we should. I mean, you know, I, I very much take the view that what we have right now is a little bit of summer doldrums, but once we get through it, once we find out, when we're starting tapering, once we find out who the Fed chairman is going to be, mm -hmm. which at the moment the, the implication is it's going to be summers, then I do think that the markets are going to react positively to that. Impact of the rising US yields, of course, being felt elsewhere. Indian rupee, historic lows there, four-year low for the Indonesian rupee. Um, how, 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 do you, how do you view that impact now and how do you play those, those currents? Well, I've got to say, I, I, I take two very separate views with regard to emerging markets. I think, I think emerging Latin America does extremely well on the back of a recovering United States. So I think that's one side. I think emerging Asia is a very different story because I think on the one hand, a lot of the flows that have supported those markets out to the US for the last decade are now drying up as they have been doing really since summer of 2011. And at the same time, they have the negative impact of a, a rather more competitively priced Japan. Mm. So they're getting crushed on both sides. I think you stay well clear of, of Asia right now. Okay. Uh, Aussie and Kiwi powering ahead there. Uh, for the moment, at least. Well, exactly. For the what, moment, what, what, and, and in fairness, you know, you've got to say that, <coughs> that, 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 that what's wrong with my particular story in Asia is China at least is showing some signs of life. Again, we have you know, the housing numbers, albeit a bit slower, still heading higher, and we know that the Bank of Japan, sorry, Bank of China, mm. is going to remain uh, relatively accommodative. That does feed into a stronger Aussie, of course. But I think, in fairness, as I'm still remain a dollar bill, I struggle to really be remain too bullish about the Aussie right here. I All think right. we're in an 88, 93 kind of world. Want to finish up with the with the Euro. Is 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 Draghi's silver tongue losing its touch? <laughs> uh, I think to a degree it will do. I mean, you know, to be quite honest, I mean, he's already pushed it as far as he possibly can. A lot of the things that historically have supported the euro, again, like the reserve diversification story, is starting to wane. So whilst I think we might have another couple of weeks of euro strength, I think the reality is that's a fairly short-term yield trade. People buying peripheral eurozone debt, mm -hmm. I think that story will fade fairly quickly. Where is euro dollar September. at the end of the year? I think we're going to be in the mid-120s again, to be quite honest. And Dolly? I think the end is an interesting one. I think we're going to be 106, 107, something like that. I think it's going to, that's going to be the big one.